Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. And this is episode 69. Yes. Tomorrow will be 70. 69. Wow. Um, if you think about it, I've been doing this every single day for 69 days straight. So right now we're 69 days in from January 1st. So pretty cool. Bravo to me um, for keeping with the commitment um it's a bit of a task but i i think i'm learning quite a bit there's there's a lot of things that i'm picking up a lot of things that um i'm recognizing um if you guys go to the beginning if you've listened from the beginning like episode one on i don't know (laughs) From a one to maybe sixty-seven, <laughs> they're kind of messy. A lot of ums and uhs, a lot of delay and waiting, and some babble. And sometimes I, I kind of get caught up. You know, I could, I get sidetracked. I end up talking about one thing and I talk about something else. I've totally forgot what the point was. And so, but I just keep on talking. And uh, um, I'm enjoying this. I, I, I mean, I, if I could, if you would ask me right now, I would say I would, I would be doing this for a very long time, indefinitely. You know, no idea when I would want to stop. Um, I have another podcast I'm working on. I have actually two more, believe it or not. Um, both of them are with Angel. Um, one is just a video podcast. Be on the lookout for that. We've been working on it for a minute. Um, and then we have another one called Jeep Thrills. I think you'll get a kick out of that one. Um, it's just finding the time. <clears throat> the filming is easy. That's that's not the problem. It's the editing, finding the time to sit down and edit. Sometimes the editing, depending on how long the, feed, the, the piece is, could take a few days, you know, and I have to break it up into like three or four hour segments, you know. So that's the thing with some of the stuff I do, like the books and so on. They're just time consuming. Meaning, not that they're time consuming. I hate to take that because that sounds kind of negative. They're not consuming my time. Um, They're just tedious. They're like, they're not projects that you could just do fast and get it done with. No, because the computer works at a certain speed. So um, even if I put everything together real quick and I hit render, I still have to sit back and wait for the computer to render the video, which means... Um, record the video as a whole. So for, so for those who don't know what rendering is, um, when I lay out my videos, like if you see my on the road videos, you'll hear music, you hear some sound effects. Um, well, basically those all go on different tracks. And then when you render them, you're actually turning them all into one file. So, and then it comes out. And that, sometimes that could take a while. That could take, you know, I can actually take a couple hours, you know, depending on how long the the piece is. And it, it does, it renders, it takes longer than the actual piece. So if the piece is five minutes long, doesn't mean the render's going to take five minutes. The render can wind up being 25 minutes. If it's an hour-long piece, you know, I might be looking at two to three hours to render, you know. Uh, I don't, mm, I use Sony Vegas and I use a PC. I don't use Final Cut or... Uh, Premiere, Premiere is some Final Cut for Mac. I don't use Macs. I use PCs, only because I'm so used to them. Um, but um, Premiere is a good program. I'm just so used to Sony Vegas. You know, I've been using it for several years. I actually had a. I, I started out with a bootleg version, and once I got the hang of the bootleg version, when they had an upgrade, I ended up buying that one. It was like I don't know, six hundred dollars for the for the program. Um, and I could continue to use that. The way the programs work nowadays is you don't actually buy the disc. Uh, everything's in the cloud. So 
meaning it's um, software that you just download. You don't even download the self software, you actually use it on their server, you know, which sometimes helps with the speed um, and also the, the regular updates. So when they update their, their system, it, it automatically will update yours. So when you go on and you look at whatever it is you're working on, you could see that there's some new features or whatever. So um, cloud is cool, but it's their way of, they got you. Okay, so whereas let's say for a Vegas, I would have paid, you know, I paid 500 bucks for it, five, 600 bucks. Okay, when you do it on the cloud, okay, they're only gonna charge you, I don't know, I could be guessing because I haven't purchased it, but let's, for instance, let's say $20, $29 a month for the program. So now, okay, cool, $29 a month for the program. Okay, you have the program for, 10 months, that's already 300 bucks. That's not even a year yet. And then you go two two years, now you got it, what? You've already paid six, probably almost 700 bucks. Think about it. So the program that I have, the Sony Vegas, I've had now, God, all together, the new one, I have to have it at least six years. So I would have paid three, six, nine, 12, 15. It would already cost me, you know, almost two grand almost two grand for this program that I could have got for 500 bucks. So, um, so it's a give and take. So the give is, um, you could start and start using the program for only $29 a month. And if you work fast and you get a lot of work done, you can really get your money's worth. Uh, and then on the long run, in the long run, they win because, um, they, first of all, it's, they're eliminating bootleg versions. Um, I don't think there, yeah, there's no way of, um, a bootleg is something from the cloud, not that I know of. Uh, you would have to go with um, with the uh, the original disc versions. I always believed that they made a lot of the disc versions um, available to bootleg uh, because there were sites that you could go on, like Sharaza and some of these other ones where you could go on there. And they were kind of dark, deep, dark sites where you could go in and get a lot of software absolutely free they'll send you like the the key code and then you download the program and they use the key the key code it's just a, a series of maybe 16 numbers you type in and it's like a key and it unlocks the program now you can use it um i always believed that they allowed that and for the simple reason is because it got me you know i had a bootleg version for a few years and what happened was i got so used to that version i learned to use that version that when i was one when i wanted to upgrade of course i'm going to go with that program because i'm already familiar with the with the with the software so it, it makes it it makes a ton of sense you know it makes a lot of sense uh there's a lot of programs that i have from way back in the days my illustrator my photoshop i use all those programs um and uh I buy I buy software and I'll pay the you know top of the dollar once I know that those that's the software I want to use for sure and if I become profitable if it's becoming if it's helping me become profitable um, yes of course I like to uh, make sure I have the original you know uh, a legitimate version of it but uh, other other than that um, but you know to have to have the bootleg, bootlegs now I don't I don't I've never looked for them so I don't know if they're even still available I'm sure you could get a disc of some old software, but it won't be anything like 2020 or probably not even 2016. That might have been like when it all pretty much stopped, you know, if I had to guess. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a, and they call them, uh, now it's like uh, S, uh, SaaS. So like SaaS companies, it's software as a service. That's what that is. And, and they're becoming very, very popular. Um, uh, these companies. So if you had the idea of ever doing anything like that, uh, yeah, these people make it kill. And then they all have apps that, that connect to it. So that way you can have an app so you can actually run the program also on your, on your phone. I don't think I have a version for Vegas. They, I'm sure there is a version if you got if I got the legitimate version, but I'm still mine is still legitimate. I paid for this one. Um, it's just this was the disc. You know, and I have no reason right now to um, to upgrade it. You know, so I'm good. I'm good with what I have. Uh, but definitely, the next program I get for movies will be Premiere. And uh, 
I'll probably be having that one maybe by next year. Uh, I just need something that can help me edit a little faster, kind of, you know, go through it and streamline it because I love editing, man. I can sit down and I love manipulating and making stories out of footage. And I'm working on another on the road series right now for uh, the shows, the two shows we just did, the one in uh, Houston and the one in Austin. Um, I'm trying to really structure these things. So when I'm going on the road now with my camera, I'm, I've always had my, my my camera on the road, so I have tons of footage. But now I'm actually going out with the intentions of shooting exactly what I need with the end in mind, meaning that when I get back home, when I get back into the office, that I know exactly what I shot and what I'm looking for. So um, I'm noticing that on the last two uh, videos that I did on the road video. So now I want to really kind of fine tune it. Uh, one of the things I have to do, I might have to get uh, a gimbal or some sort of a steady cam uh, because I get a lot of shake. And it's hard because I'm walking a lot and I have to move fast. And, you know, Fatty ain't as graceful as he used to be, <laughs> you know? So, you know, so I get a little shake and I don't want to get anyone to uh, to get seasick or watching my videos. So you you will, but I try to keep those pieces short. And uh, if they still get you dizzy, I'm sorry. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I'm trying to go out there with a little bit more uh, with the intentions of coming back and having the right footage. You know, <clears throat> my idea here is I really want to show people, I want to share, not show, but I want to share with people my experiences on the road. And I have years and years of experience. I mean, on the road with Susie, on the road with SAL, and I have some of that footage. I have footage like that. Um, it's from another camera. It's actually from a bigger camera when I used to have Dave, uh, uh, Dave Korea on the road with me, uh, Webmaster Dave. Uh, he used to bring the big old camera, and um, he used to film everything we had. And so I have to find time to sit down and start pulling up some of that footage. There's a ton of it. I have a lot of it. Um, but in the meantime, I'm trying to shoot the stuff um, that I'm on the road with right now. I'm trying to trying to break in, try to break some story uh, into this, just to kind of give you guys a little bit more of experience and maybe some inspiration or some hope and of the genre for those who kind of don't really have an idea of how this thing operates. Um, people see the artists on stage, you see the posts online. But there's there's a, there's a bit of work that goes on behind it, you know. Um, even even on our end as artists and managers, you know, a lot of behind the scenes. And uh, I want to get some more footage of me actually securing a deal. So that means um, uh, recording me on the phone, maybe setting up the deals. Those might be interesting, and you guys could kind of get an idea of how that whole process works. And if I can kind of walk you through it, that'd be uh, That'd be kind of dope, you know? Um, and I, I just want to really take out the mystery of it. And I also don't want to... I don't want to portray... Anything the way it really not... It's The way it's... You know, the way it's not. You know, the way it's... Like, I'm not trying to deceive... The process. I don't... I don't... I don't want anybody to think it's this... It's... It's something that it really isn't. Um, I do it pretty easy. I'm talking about, you know, booking these acts. And uh, it's not even booking the acts anymore. It's booking my acts. Uh, because booking agents, uh, I've done it for many years. Uh, though I still I still book, there's still a handful of, of shows you'll see on the road. And those are booked by me. It's not like it used to be. And uh, I'm cool with that. Um, it, you know, things have changed. The middleman is almost... Uh, the value has uh, kind of um, been diluted a bit uh, of what we can do. Uh, there was a time where, before social media where we were the ones with all the connections. We knew all the promoters. We knew all the artists. So, of course, we can make the deals. And, and it worked out. Now, with social media, everybody's open to connect. Um, I don't think it's a good idea, though. I, I mean, I'm cool even if I end up doing other things I'm not booking in, in general it's not a good idea because what the artists the artists are saving some money they're saving 10 maybe 15 percent on a commission that they pay an agent however because they're like in their mind well you know what 
I'll book the show and, and you know, I keep that extra 10 or 15%. Okay, that's cool. But then what happens is you don't really have anyone rooting for you, you know? You really don't have anyone, you know, if someone calls, he got to realize like this, if artist A, okay, uh, goes and they're taking shows direct and I get a call for artist A, there's a lot of times I'm going to think twice about booking artist A because in my mind, that artist A, when they when I book him that one time, he or she is going to pull that, that promoter to the side. It happens all the time. And the promoters tell me. And they're going to say, hey, listen, why don't you just call me direct? And I'll give you a, a, a discount. Now, you think, well, it doesn't really make sense. You know, they're asking for a, a discount. They're, they're offering a discount which probably be about 10%, but they don't want to use an agent and pay the agent 10% because they want to have the control over that event so that way they can always contact the promoter and maybe get back on the show, you know? But then what happens is you get people like me who I see that happening, and I, and then now when the artist gets a call through me, um, you can't blame me for not for trying to unsell it and maybe put somebody else that I know is, you know, looks out, you know. So you know, it, they they kind of they're screwing up the ecosystem of the of the business, you know. Um, agents are still pretty um uh pretty important in the hip hop fields and pop and uh, R and B and also uh, for actors in Hollywood. So agents are still very important because everybody knows the importance and the value. But unfortunately, man, with freestyle, you know, that five, uh, that ten or fifteen percent that the artists are get are uh, are uh, um, are after trying to trying to save, um, it's kind of sad. It's really not a lot of money, and they prefer to you know you know they prefer to keep that ten percent rather than have someone out there hustling for them. You know, so, but, but I mean, but that's cool. But, you know, sometimes things like that have got to happen. They have to force you to make a move. Um, my intentions wasn't to be an agent. I'll always be an agent. People will always call me for certain acts. Um, but uh, that's not the, 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 that's not the part of the business that I'm trying to blow up because it, there's no foundation. There. There's no you know, we book basically the artists that we have relationships with, and that's all the agents are like that right now, at least with freestyle. So, you know, but um, but yeah, it kind of messed up the, the ecosystem of everything. You know, and same thing with the promoters. Why a promoter would not go to an agent it kind of beats me because the promoter never has to pay the agent. The artist does. And what the promoter gets is they get someone on their team that can also help them promote, help do the paperwork, you know, got their back a little bit. Um, and they don't have to pay them. So why would a promoter not want to deal with an agent? Very simple. They love that popularity. You know? They like to, uh, um, what they call it, fraternize. They like fraternizing with the artists. They really do. They like to pull out. They want to take, the uh, promoters want to take some of these artists to, to out to eat. They want to pull out money out of their wallets and kind of, you know, play like their big daddy, you know? And that's cool, but every single promoter that I've seen do that, later on they regret it. Because what happens is a lot of times the artists will key in on that. And and artists are good, man. They have a charisma about them. They're really good. And for them to latch on to you, you know, um, and, and give you the impression as though, you know, they're your buddies, you know, and, and now you, you're finding yourself booking the same act every three months because now you feel obligated to it, you know, and now you're not even selling tickets anymore. People are tired of seeing the act. You know, these are the things that happens, you know. So, but, um, and, you know, that's the business. That's just the business of how it is. Uh, I, I'm just glad I observe it. I see it. Um, but uh, I'm just watching it, see what see where it's going. But uh, so any of these artists out there who f- are wondering, you know, what's up with the work? Because I get that. I got maybe just this week alone. No, I'm sorry, not this week. Last week, had two artists that called me. Hey, what's up, man? What's slow, man? What's going on? What's going on? Anything happening? What's popping? Da-da-da. And 
I'm like, yeah, slow, just, you know. They say, well, I saw you just came from Texas, yeah. <coughs> what they don't realize is <coughs> I came from Texas because I'm selling my acts. I'm booking my acts. They're not on those. They're not, I'm not pushing them. And now they're starting to feel it, you know. And there's a lot of promoters. A lot of the, the managers or agents are not pushing these other acts. They'd rather sell their own or at least sell um, acts that have some sort of loyalty to them. You know, I have a handful, not too many, not too many, yeah, but that's cool. And there's no hatred or that's the way it has to be. I'm cool with it. I'm cool. I'm just, I just look at the result and see what's going on. And, and, you know, when these artists call and say, Hey man, I haven't heard from you in a year. Well, why should you, you know, I haven't heard from you from a, a year. When are you? Um, and you've been doing shows. When was the last time you sent a promoter my way and said, when they contacted you, hey, man, uh, I'd like to book you for a show. Okay, yeah, call, call Latif or call our entertainment. So that doesn't happen that often. Very seldom does it happen. And it definitely happens with Lil Susie and the Cover Girls. Those are my acts. There's no way of booking around them. You, you're going to go through me no matter what. Even if you go to another agent, that's fine. I'll make sure that other agent gets paid as well. But um, but it's still going to go through me. But some of these other acts, and I have a few that that have contacted me, and they, you know, they they, they show their loyalty. Uh, but they show their loyalty, I've noticed, when things get real slow. When shit's real slow for them. But as soon as things start popping, they get pretty busy, forget it. It's done. So, and, and But again, man, hey, you know what? That's cool. You know, I wish them the best. Um, and uh, we're still, I mean, we're still cool. We're still, still trying to build the genre. Just that whole agency shit has got to shift a little bit, you know. So, but uh, anyway, guys, all right, that's it for tonight. Just wanted to reach out, say hello, say how you guys are doing, chit chat a little bit, let you know what's going on, what's happening in the industry. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you know where to see me. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment. Um, these things are very important. Um, if you are listening to this on Spotify, I don't know what platform you're listening to. I'd like to know. So if there's a way you can let me know, uh, that's cool. Um, if you guys, uh, have never checked out anchor, anchor.fm, check that out. Uh, that's my main platform from there to distribute it to all the other platforms or the, all the other, um, podcast platforms. So, um, you might want to check out uh, uh, Anchor, and uh, it's a cool, cool format. It's free. So, okay, guys. Oh, and also, if once it's on Anchor, you don't have to wait sometimes to go for it to get distributed to like Spotify. Sometimes, like a whole day. Um, I know on this podcast, um, episode sixty-seven, there was a problem with Spotify. Still trying to figure it out, um, but for some reason, it didn't grab the download. But um, anyway. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Until then, be cool and good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.